Have you ever had one of those naps where you woke up and then you felt refreshed and so much better than you did before the nap? Or that perfect Sunday afternoon nap? Or what about the nap where, that you take on accident and you wake up and you have no clue where you are or how long you've been sleeping or even sometimes who you are? Those are my favorite kind of naps. And when I was little, I took naps a lot, like most four or five year olds do. In fact, here's an adorable picture of me taking one of those infamous, I don't know where I'm at naps. Okay, I actually don't remember what it felt like when I woke up from that specific nap, but it's obvious that I napped hard that day and it probably had something to do with the Lego castles I'd built or the bones I had thrown for my dog or being picked on by my older brothers. But it's obvious that that day was exhausting and I was playing hard and I needed a nap. I needed to rest, but somehow the older I got, I decided I didn't need to nap. But worst, I thought that I didn't need to rest. In fact, I wouldn't sleep nearly as much as I needed to because I had things to do. I never got grounded, except for I would get grounded from going out and hanging out with my friends because I had been doing too much, moving too fast, and working late nights and early mornings. My parents would tell me I needed to stay home and rest and sleep, and it would usually result in a meltdown because I was tired. I reacted with streams of tears, very dramatic moments. Those nights I would often avoid my parents and sulk in my room. And this was before Netflix and smartphones, so I would just lay on my bed staring at the ceiling and by eight o'clock I would be out for the night. I would wake up feeling so much better, understanding my parents were right, but not acknowledging that because I was a teenager, so. My parents taught me something important. They taught me that rest is important. When I got to college, I fell in love with naps again. Naps are glorious and wonderful things. I love the idea of them. I find so much rest in allowing myself to nap. And napping isn't the only way that one can rest. Everyone is different, so I, but, so I just stand behind the idea of resting and finding your way to rest. I feel like it's crucial to our well-being. I think we have been designed to need a day of rest. When God created the heavens and the earth and the birds and the fish and everything in existence, he also created us. In re we read in Genesis 1:27, so God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. And then in Genesis 2, 1 through 3, we read, So the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed. On the seventh day, God had completed his work that he had done. Blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, for on it he rested from all his work of creation. It took him six days to create the universe, and on the seventh day he rested. On the seventh day he had a Sabbath. I don't think it's an accident that the fourth commandment is to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. I just think in our culture, it's hard to do. We are moving a thousand miles a minute, and even when we are in quarantine, we have projects and chores to do, and that's fine. Don't worry, I'm not asking you to delete your Pinterest because we all know I'm not going to. When I, what I'm asking is when is the last time you took a moment, took a breath, and rested? I believe a part of being made in the image of God is resting, but we can't become lazy in this rest. I can't use the, oh, I'm resting as an excuse to keep pressing play on Netflix for days and days at a time. I firmly believe that there are six days of work and one day of rest for a reason. We can't ignore that one day. Let's cherish it and let's protect it because it does more for us than what we might realize. Please, today I beg you, give yourself permission to rest.